Remember all the values of the unit circle? The one half, the root two over two, the root three over two? Yeah, neither can I. So I'm gonna show you a really nice way to remember them. Now there's so many different ways of doing this. And I really encourage you, go out on the internet and check this out because what's really, really cool is there's a left hand rule that helps to mem remember them as well. And it's so cool walking down the hallways at our school and finding all these people walking around with their left hand out and they're like doing these things with their fingers trying to figure things out. Yeah, that's great, that's awesome. That works well that way too, but check this out too. Do you realize that all the values are based on counting from zero? Zero, one, two, three, and four. Here's how it works. Let me show you how it works. This is my way of doing it, okay? Check this out. Everything's divided by two. Do you notice that all of those values were always divided by two? Everything was divided by two. Now, also, everything was square rooted. Why? Good old Pythagoras, right? Finding that final value. So look what happens. If I square root zero, I get zero. Divided by two is zero. There's zero. If I square root one, I'm going to get one. Divided by two, there's that other one. Do you remember the square root of two divided by two? That was that special triangles one, wasn't it? We also had the square root of three over two as well. Square root of four is two. Two divided by two is one. Let me show you how this works now. If you actually think about this, look at this. This is the longest measure in a unit circle. That's your radius. This is the smallest measure of a unit circle. From zero to one, they're in order of the, from the shortest to the longest length. Okay, now you're probably going, so what? <laughs> Let me show you how it works. This is going to be very, very cool. Start with your unit circle. Okay, a nice blank unit circle. And I'm just going to draw a real pretty circle all the way around here. Oh my God, yeah, that's just so gorgeous. I know. Now, watch this. You remember from the radian measure. That was zero. That was pi. That was two pi. Now, I'm going to start breaking things up a little bit for you. How I'm going to break things up is, well, first things first, is I'm going to look at this guy right here. And if you think about that guy, think about it. Look. Isn't that halfway between pi and zero? So in fact, that is pi over two. But I'm also gonna break this up a little bit more and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So that's pi over two, that's gotta be two pi over two, that's gotta be three pi over two, that's gotta be four pi over two, which we know is just plain old two pi. Okay, so we're done with that. But now let's start playing around a little bit more. Okay, if you play around a little bit more, one of the things that you're going to develop here is, and you're going to see is that you can actually split this in half and split that in half. Now think about how many pieces of the pi <laughs> you have. So think about this. There's one, two, three, four pieces make up this part of the pi. So that's pi over four. That would be 2 pi over 4, but wait a second, 2 pi over 4, reduce that. That's oh, just pi over 2. There's 3 pi over 4. Can I keep going? There's 4 pi over 4. You betcha I can keep going. 4 pi over 4 is just pi, so I'll get rid of that. Look at this. That would be 5 pi over 4. That would be 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2. There's 7 pi over 4. And then over here would be 8 pi over 4, which if you look at this, it's just 2 pi again. Oh my God, yeah. Now, let's go look at degrees then. Let's talk about degrees. I'm going to write the degrees right over top of this. This is 0. This has got to be, well, yeah, that's got to be 180. Okay. That's got to be 90 up here. That's got to be 270 down here. So let's talk. Halfway between 90 and 0, it's got to be 45. So guess what? Pi over 4 in radians is 45 degrees in degrees. Oh, oh my goodness. Pi over 2 in radians has got to be 90 degrees. 3 pi over 4, which is this guy right over here, okay? Think about it. This is 180. Go back 45 degrees. Think about that. That's got to be 135 degrees. So 135 degrees is 3 pi over 4. Keep on going. You're at 180. Go another 45 degrees because all we're doing is going up by 45 degrees. 
Okay? So if you think about it, this has got to be 225 degrees. Down to here, we already got 270. Over to here, that's going to work out to be our 315 degrees. Wow. Now, let's think about this. 45 degrees, we did a really pretty triangle. Do you remember that pretty triangle? You betcha. 1, 1, root 2. And then we divided everything by root 2, divided everything by root 2, divided everything by root 2. And this ended up being a 1. There's our radius. Okay, that's 45 degrees, and we didn't like the way that looked. Well, that's why I wrote it here. Root 2 over 2. Ho, ho, ho. So what does this mean? The coordinates of every one of these points here, if you draw a box, and that box will actually be a square, is root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. Wow, every coordinate. So that is going to be minus root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, because you're going in the minus direction first and then up. This is minus minus. So this is going to be minus root 2 over 2, minus root 2 over 2. This one over here is going to be, guess what? Yeah, positive negative. So it's root 2 over 2, minus root 2 over 2. That's how you find the coordinates in degrees, in radians, and in actual exact value coordinates. Isn't that pretty? Oh my God, yeah. yeah, it is. Now, can I do the same thing for 30, 60, 90? Well, of course you can. Because if you look, meaning that this is a perfect square, see how that's a perfect square? All of them are root two over two. Perfect square is the guy in the middle. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to do this real quick coming up in a subsequent podcast, okay? But I want to now look at my 30, 60, 90 triangles. Do you remember it was this guy and this guy for 30, 60, 90? Huh, okay, so let's actually do this and do a brand new circle. Brand new circle time. Okay, here we go. Brand new circle. There's my beautiful new unit circle. Now, remember our values were root 3 over 2, and I'm going to put that, and 1 half. There we go. Remember, that's shorter, that's longer. And that was based on our 30, 60, 90 triangle. Right? Do you remember that? Okay. So, let's go. First things first. There, I'm going to put my 30 degrees first. If I put my 30 degrees, remember, what are the coordinates of my 30 degrees? My coordinates of my 30 degrees, that's going to be long, that's going to be short. The long one is root 3 over 2. The short one's 1 half, which I remember if I put a box down, it all works out great. But I want to show you something which is really neat. Think about 180 degrees for a second. Isn't that just a multiple of 30? Yes, as a matter of fact, it is. Look, 30, the next one would be 60. Oh, this part of my special triangle. The next one would be 90. Mm hmm After that would be, oh, 120. Huh. After that would be 150. After that would be 180, wouldn't it? And look how this divided up, remember, my pi. Look how it divided it up into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 segments. <gasps> Oh my God, yeah. so that means that this guy's pi over 6, this guy's 2 pi over 6, this guy here would be 3 pi over 6, that guy here would be 4 pi over 6, that one is 5 pi over 6, finally 6 pi over 6, or just plain old pi, and then keep going by 30 degrees. 180 plus 30 is going to give you your 210. Another 30 degrees is going to give you 240. The next one, you know that that one's 270. Another one's going to be 300 degrees. That's going to be 330 degrees. And then finally, that's your 360 degrees. But check this out. If we continue on with our pi over 6s, you know that this guy is 6 pi over 6, giving you pi. That's going to be 7 pi over 6. That's going to be 8 pi over 6. 9 pi over 6 down here. This is going to be for 300, it's going to be 10 pi over 6. 
This guy over here for 330 is going to be 11 pi over 6. And lo and behold, for 360 is going to be 12 pi over 6, which we know is 2 pi. Oh, my goodness. How incredible is that? But you know and I know that we've already got ones like this guy. We know that that guy's pi over 2. That guy over here was reduced down to 3 pi over 2. Do you remember that? Okay, if not, go back a couple of, couple minutes ago. So, what else am I going to do? I want to show you something that's cool. There's, ready for this? There's that box. There's that box. But this time the box is, whoa, I'm a little off, is rectangular. It's rectangular. And at, that means every one of these coordinates has the same coordinates. This one's going to be re 3 over 2, 1 half, but negative positive. So negative root 3 over 2, 1 half. This one's going to be negative negative. That one's going to be positive negative. And it just makes so much sense if you do it that way. But take a look at the last coordinate, which is these guys. Right? Notice that these guys are always over 6. But this guy, if you draw a box, goes here, 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 and here. Every one of those coordinates on the box can be reduced. Every one of these coordinates can be reduced, divisible by 2, of course. So this becomes pi over 3. This becomes 2 pi over 3. This becomes 4 pi over 3. This guy, of course, becomes 5 pi over 3. And what is the coordinates? Half root 3 over 2. 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 Every one of these coordinates on that rectangular box has now, look, half root 3 over 2. You just have to figure out the positives and negatives based on where you're going. So what I want to do in the next podcast is I'm going to show you how to develop this so you can do it within like three or four minutes. Stay tuned.